In the autumn of 1918, people were dropping dead so fast that bodies piled in the streets. The Spanish flu didn't just sicken, it struck young, healthy adults and killed them within hours. Entire towns were left silent. For over 100 years, its true origin was one of medicine's greatest mysteries. But now, scientists have resurrected its genetic blueprint from century-old lung tissue. What they found is not what the history books told us, and it could rewrite how we think pandemics begin. The Spanish flu didn't actually start in Spain. During World War I, most countries censored bad news to keep morale high. Spain, being neutral, reported openly on the outbreak, so the world assumed it began there. In reality, the 1918 pandemic was everywhere at once, sweeping across continents in three devastating waves. It infected roughly one-third of the planet's population and killed at least 50 million people, more than the war itself. What made it even stranger was its unusual target. Healthy young adults in their 20s and 30s were dying at alarming rates, while the very young and very old sometimes survived. For decades, historians and scientists argued about where it truly began. Was it in the trenches of Europe, the farms of North America, or somewhere in Asia? Until now, no one had definitive proof. For over a century, the origin of the Spanish flu was a scientific whodunit. One leading theory pointed to a rural county in Kansas, where an unusual wave of deadly pneumonia hit farm workers in early 1918. Another argued that the virus began in the crowded trenches and field hospitals of World War I Europe, mutating rapidly in the chaos of war. Others still suggested a jump from birds or pigs somewhere in Asia, quietly spreading before the first big outbreaks. Each theory had evidence, but none had conclusive proof. Historical medical records were patchy, and the virus itself was long gone. Without surviving samples, scientists could only speculate. The real challenge was finding preserved tissue from victims, samples that still contained traces of the virus's genetic code. And that hunt seemed hopeless, until a breakthrough changed everything. In a dusty medical archive in Zurich, researchers came across something extraordinary. Glass jars holding preserved lung tissue from patients who died during the 1918 pandemic. The tissue had been stored in formalin, a chemical preservative, and then embedded in paraffin wax, an old pathology practice that accidentally froze history and time. Inside those samples were fragments of the Spanish flu's RNA, the genetic instructions of the virus. This was a huge find. Most viral RNA degrades quickly, especially after a century. Using advanced sequencing technology, scientists painstakingly reconstructed the genome from these microscopic remains. For the first time, we had a complete genetic snapshot of the Spanish flu from continental Europe, taken at the very height of the outbreak. That meant researchers could finally compare it to earlier and later samples and see how it evolved. And what they found was both surprising and unsettling. When scientists decoded the Zurich samples, they expected to see a virus in the process of adapting to humans. Instead, it was already perfectly tuned for human infection. The genetic sequence revealed no training phase. The virus seemed to have entered the human population already armed with mutations that made it spread rapidly and resist immune defenses. Some of these mutations were in the hemagglutinin and polymerase genes, which helped the virus attach to cells and copy itself. Strikingly, these changes matched patterns seen in avian influenza viruses, suggesting a direct jump from birds to humans, rather than evolving gradually in another animal host like pigs. Even more unsettling, the European genome was nearly identical to North American samples from 1918. That meant by the time it appeared in Switzerland, the virus was already a global traveler, moving faster than the scientific world of the time could even imagine. The genetic trail was now pointing to a very specific origin story. By comparing the Zurich genome to other recovered samples, including ones from Alaska and New York, scientists built a phylogenetic tree, a kind of family chart for viruses. The results were striking. All branches pointed back to a single ancestor that likely emerged in the Western Hemisphere just before 1918. The genetic evidence matched historical clues from Kansas, where a strange and deadly respiratory illness struck soldiers at Camp Funston in March 1918. Within weeks, troops deployed to Europe carried the infection across the Atlantic, where it exploded in crowded trenches and port cities. From there, the pandemic spread along shipping routes to Asia, 
Africa, and South America. This pattern fit the data better than any other theory. A bird flu virus jumped directly into humans in North America, then spread worldwide through wartime troop movements. The Zurich sample confirmed that Europe's early cases were genetically identical to North America's, meaning the pandemic's starting gun had been fired before anyone realized it. With the Zurich genome in hand, scientists could finally see the pandemic's opening moves. The evidence now suggested a chain of events. Sometime in late 1917 or early 1918, a bird flu virus, already well adapted to infect humans, spilled over in North America. Soldiers training in Kansas were among the first to carry it, moving it into military camps and then onto troop ships bound for Europe. Once in Europe, the virus found the perfect storm, overcrowded trenches, poor sanitation, and a constant flow of soldiers and supplies. It spread silently at first, mutating only slightly, which is why the Zurich genome looks almost identical to North American ones. By the time civilian doctors noticed an unusual and deadly pneumonia, it was too late. The virus was on every continent. For decades, historians debated whether the pandemic began in Kansas, France, or China. Ancient RNA sequencing has now tilted the scales firmly toward a North American origin, followed by an unprecedented global blitz. The 1918 flu's genetic resurrection is more than a history lesson. It's a warning. It shows how a virus can leap into humans already armed for rapid spread, and how global travel, even a century ago, can turn a local outbreak into a worldwide disaster in weeks. Understanding its origin helps scientists spot similar threats today, especially from avian influenza strains that circulate in birds and occasionally infect humans. It also highlights the hidden value of medical archives. Those jars of lung tissue sat unnoticed for decades, yet inside them was the answer to one of medicine's greatest mysteries. It makes you wonder how many other deadly secrets are still waiting in old pathology collections. For more than a century, the Spanish flu's true beginnings were lost to time. Now, thanks to ancient RNA recovered from preserved lung tissue, we know it likely began as a bird virus in North America, already primed to infect humans, before racing across the globe in 1918. The discovery rewrites pandemic history and reminds us that nature's deadliest weapons can emerge suddenly without warning. By unlocking the past, scientists aren't just solving mysteries, they're building defenses for the future. The next pandemic could be brewing right now. The question is, will we recognize it in time? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with others who enjoy exploring the past through the lens of modern science. Every week we uncover more discoveries that change how we understand our history, and sometimes our future. Join us next time as we explore another story where ancient clues meet cutting-edge research. Until then, stay curious and take care.